Today marks the first year anniversary of the Emperor Carloi Croissant and Empress of Vandalwa marriage, celebrated with a festive party at the Imperial Palace. But no one in the capital was aware of the fact that the Emperor despised the Empress. The Emperor danced with other women, while the Empress was seen waiting with palace maids in a banquet hall, appearing familiar with such events. Duke of Dolwa endured unfair treatment to his daughter, despite her role as his wife in name only. Nobles approached the Empress, but she remained silent. The Emperor raised his voice on a joyous day, revealing something to the people. He told them that despite a year since their marriage, they still has no heir. The nobles observed the Duke of Dawa, who now displays hostility towards the emperor. On the other hand, the empress remained expressionless, as if she was listening to other people's affairs. It was as though her soul was somewhere else. A young lady, daughter of Marquis Rodin, enters the banquet hall in a colorful dress, equating to the empress's attire. Now, the Duke of Dawa turned red to the point that it seemed like his head would burst. Likewise, the Empress finally changed her emotionless face. Kana Rodin gently approached the Emperor in a charming voice, expressing her fear of embarrassment. He affectionately hold Kana Rodin and declared that she will be her queen, causing a resounding Your Majesty in the banquet hall. The nobles told him concubinage system had disappeared 200 years ago but he declared that he took a precious possession of hers and would be rude not to take responsibility. The Duke of Dawa couldn't suppress his anger anymore and shouted, Your Majesty? The Emperor looked at the Empress and asked her that she will not be jealous. The Empress answered that she understand. Although the people didn't care much, the Empress' indifferent voice seemed to have incited his anger. The Emperor was angered by her calm response but agrees to handle the procedures for turning Kana into his queen and takes his leave. So, in the first year of their marriage, Emperor Carloi brought a new woman whom he slept with and proclaimed her as his queen. One year ago, Yvonne Dawa was the only daughter of the Duke of Dawa, whose power was above the emperor. And that was why Carloi Croissant, the emperor of Croissant, hated Yvonne Dawa very much. On their wedding day, Carloi yawned at the duke's tears, feeling forced into a marriage she didn't want. However, it was evident that Carloy is the one who hated the marriage. It was the Duke of Dawa who forced Carloy to marry his daughter by making a trap enough for him to do so as his life was involved. The Duke of Dawa asked Carloy to take good care of his daughter but he refuses to be kind to her and asks to marry her to someone else. The Duke of Dawa smiles nonchalantly when he sees Carloy's sarcasm. The Duke answered that only the Emperor is on match with his daughter, which makes Carloy angrier. It was not entirely wrong to say that, as he was the greatest Duke in the Empire, but the Emperor was very angry once he heard those words. He coveted the position greedily, as if he looked down on the Imperial family. Yvonne de Wa made her first appearance on their wedding day, showcasing her impressive beauty with platinum white hair and green eyes that shimmered like waves. Her stunning appearance was a testament to her beauty and grace. The emperor told her that finally they had seen each other. Yvonne just stared at him with seriousness. Carloy became displeased and started getting goosebumps when he noticed that the eyes staring at him didn't falter, not even once. Carloy interlocked his cold hand with her with an unpleasant face. At his actions, Yvonne looked surprised for a moment, but Carloy continued to hold her hands. At the end of the ceremony, Carloy left immediately and never once even looked back at Yvonne. The nobles had left the ceremony chattering, even if the two didn't kiss. The duke confronts Yvonne, who was left by the emperor that she reveals her desire to tame the emperor through her words, causing the other nobles to be stunned and question her intentions. The aristocrats who were on the side of the emperor resented and told Carloy about the arrogant attitude of Yvonne de Wa, who resembled her father. Thus, Carloy, who disappeared right after the wedding ceremony, came to their bedroom with a cold face. Carloy approached Yvonne to tell him what she said on her father and asked if she is aware about his feelings towards the duke, which Yvonne answered she was aware of. Carloy reveals that his dislike for the Duke is as high as to eliminate people with Dawa last name in the Empire. Yvonne appeared calm and indifferent, asking if he could do it. Carloy was surprised by her question, but she repeat her question if he can remove the Dawa household, but Carloy was angered that make him laugh. Yvonne suggests having a child with her if he can't do it, hoping his father will be satisfied. Her words meant that if he couldn't get rid of the Duke, he should just shut up and accept their marriage. Carloy feels insulted by Yvonne's words, 
but she encourages him to face reality and pretend to be on good terms. Carloy understands that marrying the Duke's daughter and making their son as his successor will end his ambitions. But it wasn't acceptable. The Duke killed half of Carloy's family. He even tried to kill Carloy. He didn't want to listen to what that madman wanted. The Empress is advised to be prepared to risk her neck if caught in a dangerous situation, as the old man's blood cannot be put on the throne despite the Empire's destruction. At his sudden threat, his anger was evident. Carlo said each word with emphasis and turned away from the Empress. Yvonne called him quietly, but he didn't turn around. Carloy barely managed to hold back the sneer that was about to come out of his mouth and told he she may be the Empress of this country, but that would be the end of it. After their marriage, the Empress was excluded from imperial affairs and unable to preside over duties, but continued her daily life carelessly and at ease, enjoying her time in the palace. The Emperor and Empress had monthly meals, causing catastrophic consequences. The Emperor advised Yvonne against personal contact with the Duke. Yvonne answered yes to all his questions, not finishing his sentence. He became angry of her behavior. He expresses his dissatisfaction with her father's attack on him over marital affairs, but she replied, claiming it was a conversation between parent and child. The Empress expresses her concern for Carloy's child and warns him that it was for his sake, but he answered that he knows what's best for him. Yvonne continued to eat quietly for a while, as if to accept the Emperor's response, but soon opened her mouth again and asked what she have to do to get him to her palace. Carloy felt something familiar. It was an unpleasant familiarity, and Anward if the Empress were to disappear, he would probably go. Suddenly, the image of the Duke of Dolois at the political meeting came to mind, and Carloy lost his appetite. He stopped eating, throwing the tableware, and ended up leaving the table. He didn't even want to look back. It's hard to understand when she always ignored him, and he doesn't even know why she often stares at people like that. Every time she did that, Carloy hated Yvonne even more. Carloy urged Yvonne for an answer without hiding his boredom. Yvonne agrees to work on the task, and Kina expresses gratitude to Empress, expressing her satisfaction with the situation. Carloy decided to spend time alone with Kina. Kina bowed to Yvonne, and the Emperor and Lady left the palace. Yvonne, who was left alone, was worried. She is unsure how to handle her new role as she has come in with her father's help. Yvonne bursts into laughter. Carloy, disapproving of Kiana's actions, asks her about handing their marriage to the Empress. Kiana, adjusting her headdress, looks at Carloy and answered that she wants to see Her Majesty's reaction. She told him to notify her about lunch with the Empress. She added that Carloy is a cruel husband that is beyond her imagination. But Carloy told her that she show no mercy to the Empress, and the reason he choose her. She expresses frustration with her contract with the Emperor, claiming he is overusing her for private affairs and trying to make the Empress jealous. Carloy's face was horribly distorted. That statement was ridiculous to hear. Jealousy was a word that would be used between people with feelings for each other. There was no such thing between Yvonne and himself. Carloy argued that the Empress is emotionless. Her cold demeanor is questioned, as she has the Duke as her father. Carloy scolds Kiana for her dismissive tone, suggesting that it is easier to seduce a stone than the Empress. It was an unnecessarily extreme statement. Kiana was thinking why he is so repulsed by an Empress, who he has no interest in. Carloy asked about her father, Marquis Rodin, a powerful figure in the aristocratic faction, but lacks courage to bring their daughter into the Imperial Palace, as he prefers His Majesty's side over Duke Dolois. Kiana questions the Duke's history of kidnapping Imperial family members, mentioning a young Carloy kidnapped in a Duke of Delois Forest. Despite the assailant's attempts, the Duke killed all involved without reporting the incident. Carloy asked about the investigation. She had already informed her father about the incident, which they found all was destroyed and no witnesses survived. She asked if he is finding someone, but he answered that he is only searching for evidence that the Duke did it, not someone. Kina knew he was lying. Yvonne's father walked around the palace with a red-green face three times a day. Of course, all of this was reported to Carloy. The head attendant recounted the facts he had heard of. The Duke shouted at Carloy with an angry face. Carloy orders Gorton to urge the Empress to finish her job and complete it promptly. 
Gordon told him that he will word his message to the Empress mildly to avoid upsetting the Duke de Wa, but Carloy shouted angrily. Gordon leaves office, Carloy remembers the Duke of Dawa, a vivid memory on how he whisper on his ear while he as a child can do nothing. The Empress, who received the Emperor's message to speed up the process, sent a brief reply that she will keep it in mind, without saying anything else. The answer was very much like Avon. After two weeks of entrusting the job, there was no progress. That caused Carloy to become furious, and went directly to the Empress Palace. The handmaids were surprised to see the emperor, who hated the empress, step in the empress's palace entrance and walk into the bedroom himself. Carloy felt a lingering sense of the uneasiness circulating throughout the empress's palace among the commotion. The handmaids guarding the entrance tried to stop the emperor. Before Carloy could say anything, the attendant, Gordon, yelled at the maids and asked if they were crazy for trying to stop the emperor, and told them to step back. Carloy found the bedroom dark and unable to see well due to closed curtains. He turned on the lights and was surprised to what he saw. The floor was covered with shattered glass. Carloy tried looking around to see what the hell happened. Carloy heard a sharp, sensitive voice from the Empress's bedroom, revealing that Yvonne had warned her maid not to turn on the lights. Marianne, a handmaid, was shocked that the Emperor saw the Empress appearance, while Carloy asked what was happening to Yvonne. Mary, Anne and Gordon witness Carloy stepping on a glass, causing fear and confusion. They follow him, unsure of what's going on. Mirror fragments and liquor litter the bed. Yvonne wasn't speaking how she usually does. Her eyes, which had no soul in them, found Carloy standing in front of her. Carloy's gaze passed Yvonne's messy hair and touched her pale hand with blood flowing, cut by the glass. It was the first time since the wedding that their hands met. The silence, which was as precarious as the broken glass, ended when Yvonne, pulling her hand away coldly. Carloy's left hand feels empty, and he expresses disgust and anger, and question her behavior, assuming she's not ashamed of others seeing her in this state. Carloy told her that he visited her for the queen's ceremony. Yvonne apologized for slowness, while Carloy hoped that if she knew how to work efficiently, the ceremony would have been completed quicker. Carloy shook Yvonne's shoulder, expressing his dissatisfaction with the situation and urging her to do what she must, while Yvonne reassured him. Gordon and Mary Ann, who were standing behind, faced each other in astonishment from the shocking response. Yvonne asks sarcastically if she is cruel, while he, the emperor, dismisses her as a shameless, emotionless, and wicked empress. She questions if it's evil enough to cancel the queen's ceremony or oust Lady Rodan. Yvonne's harsh words sparked Carloy's calmness, expressing her desire to live quietly and benefit his majesty, akin to a scarecrow empress, without interference. Carloy sarcastically asks that she's doing it for him, while observing Yvonne's hand, which is now dry, indicating a sense of conscience. Carloy, feeling Yvonne's shivering, persistently discussed his desire for her to disappear and be out of his sight. Carloy, expressing his disapproval of her kindheartedness, urged her to finish the queen's ceremony. Yvonne felt helpless when she heard Carloy's cold words. She didn't even want to look at him. Carloy criticized the maids for causing the empress's mess and ordered the employees to be punished, urging to educate them to prevent similar incidents. Mary Ann followed the emperor and begged for forgiveness. Outside the empress palace, Carloy stopped abruptly. He asks if it happens often, Mary Ann denies the occurrence. He instructs her to tend the Empress's hands, causing Mary Ann to be startled and return to the palace. Carloy's words seemed to be effective. After leaving the Empress Palace, the work was carried out with great haste. The Queen's ceremony was completed quickly, raising doubts about the Empress's deliberate delay and her persuasion of the Duke, who was no longer visiting the palace. Carloy told Gorton that if the Empress decided, things would progress quickly. Carloy felt uncomfortable and remembered Yvonne's appearance, which seemed out of her mind. Gordon inquires about the Queen's ceremony date, which is the same as the anniversary of the Duchess of Dolwa death. Carloy is unaware of this, but an incident makes the day unforgettable. The Queen's ceremony coincides with the Duchess's death and doubts if she is unlikely to forget the day her mother passed away. The Duke of Dawa argues against bringing another woman as queen, fearing the country may collapse due to her arrival, but Carloy answered that it was better that the empire will collapse. 
The Duke told him that there were rumors that the Imperial family's affairs would be entrusted to Lady Rodin, despite the Empress's presence. Carloy questions that he always bothers him that his daughter is weak, so he doesn't trust the Imperial family's complicated work, especially considering the Empress' health. Carloy, eloquently expressing his feelings, reassures the Duke that the Empress has never had any complaints due to her understanding of his feelings. The Duke bit his lip, as his blood boiled when he saw Carloy lying naturally, pretending he had done it for the Empress. The Duke knew that the Emperor, subtly excluding the Empress, but Carloy argued that he entrusted the Queen's ceremony to the Empress. The Duke of Dewa questioned him if it really is the Empress that working on the Queen's ceremony, since she would not be crazy choosing a date that coincide with his wife's death anniversary. A terrifying silence came. Screaming in front of the Emperor is something the Duke of Dewa sometimes does, but it's been a while since he's been this loud. The Emperor asked if he his, saying that it is him who choose the date, and called the Duke crazy. He told the Duke that he really is an old man and expresses that he don't have any care about his wife's death. No one dared to stop Carloy from leaving the conference hall, as he was venting his dawning anger everywhere. Gordon questioned Carloy about the Empress's deliberate actions, implying it was to give the Duke an excuse to blame His Majesty. It was a reasonable doubt, but Carloy didn't agree easily. He thought she was unlikely to do this, but Carloy laughed at his own thoughts. He didn't know anything about Yvonne. Carloy was harsh to her at the Empress's palace the last time. She might have felt hurt by it and wanted to empower the Duke. Gordon informs Carloy that Lady Rodin wants to meet him. He told her to meet at the indoor garden of the Annex, known for its glass ceiling. Carloy, not interested in the garden, doesn't usually visit it, but it's symbolic. Carloy, who was heading through the Emperor's passage to the indoor garden, suddenly stopped, causing Gordon and other attendants to entangle their steps and stop as well. Carloy questions why the Empress is there without permission, but decide to ask her himself. The maid Marianne, and some of the handmaids were the first to notice Carloy approaching. Yvonne was surprised to find Carloy after their last meeting. Carloy couldn't take his gaze off her hand. He could remember clearly that it was the left hand that got injured the last time, but to reach it out to the rain without a bandage, is she really crazy or does she just not care at all? He asked what is she doing in that place, since it can only access with the Emperor's permission, she answered that she didn't know. Marianne, the maid answered instead, that the servants there didn't also know and just let them in. The emperor implied it wasn't the empress's fault and called Gordon, and ordered the indoor garden workers to be relocated and ensured the staff was smarter. Yvonne apologized to Carloy, claiming she didn't know about the incident and would never return to the Anchuarum, urging him not to punish innocent servants. Carloy is irritated by the sarcastic comments, assures the Empress that they were only relocated. The conversation intensifies with rain, causing tension. Yvonne appears exhausted. Carloy questions the Queen's ceremony date, claiming it was chosen based on the anniversary of his birth mother's death. As soon as Yvonne heard the question, her face turned pale and she started falling. Rather, Carloy was surprised and took a step up. She answered that she forgot it, but Carloy is suspicious, doubting if she really forgot something important. Carloy warns Yvonne to stay still, urging her to think carefully before making any decisions. Hearing that, Yvonne's complexion became pallor, but Carloy didn't even feel sympathy for her. It only made him believe that she was good at acting because she resembled the Duke. He questions why she have time to go for a walk while preparing the Queen's ceremony. As Yvonne stood up to leave, a loud noise suddenly came from something breaking from above. Carloy, surprised by a sound and couldn't see anything. Yvonne wrapped around him. He was surprised. Kino Rodin's voice interrupted the silence, and Yvonne, startled, moved away from Carloy. She apologized, but Carloy was shocked and unable to answer. A large twig fell to the floor. Carloy questioned why she thought something was falling. Yvonne answered that she don't want him to be hurt. Carloy advised Empress Yvonne not to be foolish, and discouraged her not to do it again, while Yvonne retreated slowly. Yvonne's gaze remained on Kina, who bows down. Carloy bluntly tells her that he told her to come, assuming she's authorized to access the indoor garden. Yvonne confirms, of course, your majesty. Yvonne left, and Kina, bowing, asked why Carloy's ears were red. Kiana and Carloy enter an indoor garden.
Carloy asked why she asked to meet. Kiana answered that her father investigates a strange case of Carloy's kidnapping 14 years ago. Carloy recalls the Duke, while Kiana continues to explain that the Duke must have fired all the employees after his return to the palace. The 200 people disappeared, and it was speculated that the Duke killed them. Kina suggests on focusing on finding the former employee's traces to uncover the truth. She acknowledges the time-consuming process, but acknowledges the possibility of the Duke had killed them. The Emperor asked her what to do. Kina told him that the Duke have someone that he didn't replace from his mansion. That will be beneficial for them. Kina, despite Carloy's crumpled face, speaks confidently about this someone that can access the Duke's house. The Emperor asks if she is suggesting seduce the Empress. But he expresses the difficulty in overcoming his dislike for the Empress and the Empress's hatred towards him, stating that it is impossible. Kiana answered that it's because he treats her that way, and lowered her head after realizing she crossed the line. Kina reveals that the Empress doesn't hate him, but he told her how can she choose him if he is the one who will kill her father and insensitive. Kina told him her story about her kind and indecisive father, and broke her father's will to marry someone she didn't want signing a contract with the emperor to be with someone she loved. She added that she could do all that even if her father is at risk. But what about Her Majesty the Empress? Unless you're an idiot, you know that the Duke is garbage. Carloy understands Kina's message, but sighs and will try to think about it. He was annoyed to hold Yvonne. What more about temptation and love she was talking about? Carloy asks Kina that if he accepts the offer, the Empress will sell her father out of love, leading to his death. He denies any love for the Empress, fearing it would destroy her status with nothing left to her. Kina emphasizes her love was important over Carloy's words, stating that blindness by love can lead to losing sight, and leaves the Entrarium. Carloy was thinking about the blind for love and knew its meaning better than anyone else. His grandfather ignored the opposition and fought for foreign princesses' love, leading to the dynasty's downfall. As long as he remembered his memory instead of his grandfather, as long as he remembered whose life was sacrificed for his, Carloy would never be a man who could love someone. Carloy intensifies Queen's coronation ceremony meals with antidote elements, fearing more poisoning attempts. He tries to avoid them, but Duke de Wa terrifying efforts are remembered. After his marriage to Yvonne, he feel unsafe after a year. Luckily, his predictions were wrong, Carloy's meal was fine, and there were no assassins targeting him. Carloy's meal was fine and there were no assassins. Gordon reassured Carloy that the Duke of Dolwa is not reckless and has his own procedures for dealing with silence, which is a problem. Carloy asked about the Empress. Gordon answered that she was busy preparing for the Queen's ceremony, but he is still uneasy, making it unclear what she can do to him. A secret letter to Kina two days before the ceremony was delivered, and told it to Carloy, whose resistance to poison is weak. Kina muttered after reading a letter revealing the Duke of Dolwa plan to poison her at the Queen's ceremony, which does not surprising for both Carloy and Kina. Carloy is surprised by the secret letter, which he believe is a trap. They question the identity of the Duke's servants and the type of trap they will use. So they held their breath and waited for the ceremony as if they had become bait themselves. On the day of the ceremony, it wasn't only Carloy and Kina that focused all of their attention on the coronation ceremony. The emperor's nobles attempted to find fault with the empress, but the coronation ceremony was perfect. But the emperor was not dancing or exchanging a glance with the empress. The emperor and queen's love affair continued, showcasing Carloy's affection. Yvonne remained breathless, observing Carloy's conversation and dancing with Kina. Carloy was uncomfortable with the uncertainty of whether the information in a letter was true and if it would cause poisoning. Yvonne was asked by Carloy if she did the ceremony alone, implying she was assisted by the Duke. Yvonne accepted the compliment, noticing the meaning in Carloy's cold atmosphere, and answered yes. He fell anger with her and threatened to remove her from the Empress's seat if she did anything wrong. Carloy warns Yvonne not to plan anything to harm Kina during the coronation ceremony and leave her alone. Yvonne asked him if she can do something like that. Carloy firmly believes Yvonne is capable of more than just killing the queen. Yvonne argues that if the queen is wronged, it would benefit his majesty, who would make her take responsibility and kill her. Carloy glared at Yvonne with a ferocious expression, seemingly unfairly urging her to try, claiming he wouldn't kill her easily. Carloy raised a toast cup to celebrate Croissant's glory, but remained calm as he lowered it. 
Kina remembered the letter sent to her. Yvonne lifts a glass, expressing hope for Croyson's glory, despite her heartless voice. Kina, fearing the poisonous situation, grabbed her cup. Despite being a non-poison tolerant individual, she was hesitant to risk her life. As Yvonne lowered her cup, Kina raised her toast cup, causing Yvonne to vomit blood. The hall became chaotic. Kina took a silver rod and O confirmed the wine was poisoned, while Yvonne fell on Carloy's shoulder, smearing his shoulder with her blood. Her hand was shaking, indicating she was still conscious. Carloy, trembling, grasped Yvonne and opened a bottle of antidote, causing Yvonne to lose consciousness and fall into Carloy's arms. Carloy, unable to speak, declared that the Empress was poisoned and ordered to block all entrances to the Imperial Palace. The Empress was poisoned, and the Imperial Palace was flipped over. Investigation began, but no evidence and witness was found. As they were killed, even the Empress attendants. Carloy believed it was the Duke's work, as he was familiar with it. The Queen is suspected of poisoning the Empress during the coronation ceremony, but the Marquis of Rodin denies it. The Duke claims the Marquis poisoned the Empress, but no evidence supports it. The investigation ends with no lead and no evidence. Nevertheless, the Duke could not intentionally try to poison his daughter. That was what Carloy gathered from his reaction. His face was as surprised as a person who had been in an unexpected situation. But the Duke wouldn't make a mistake, and he didn't have anyone to change glasses, except for only one person. On the third day, Carloy struggles to understand why he was in the Empress bedroom and why he hastily fed the antidote, since he wants Yvonne's death if he didn't act. The Emperor recalls Yvonne vomiting blood, causing him discomfort and trembling. Rumors circulate in the Imperial Palace that the Emperor has finally realized the Empress's worth. Yvonne opened her eyes and blinked slowly, confused by her close proximity to Cal, who hates her green eyes. She whispers, Cal? Carloy muttered and stared blankly at Yvonne. Yvonne's eyes closed, and Carloy remained motionless, unable to comprehend the situation. Carloy was disturbed by the Empress's bizarre behavior, considering she called his nickname and the possibility of having another man named Cal, which he found absurd and unsettling. The feeling of being called by his own nickname reminded him of a person he missed, but he shook his head. He must have gone crazy himself. They are not alike. Why the hell did he think that? Carloy, trembling, contemplates Yvonne's words, deciding to live quietly in the palace to benefit his majesty and avoid any disturbance. Carloy feels suffocated and Yvonne's gaze reminds him of her in the garden. Yvonne's unhappy face changes after hearing Carloy's answer, revealing Yvonne was poisoned and fell instead of Kina. I think the Empress does not hate your majesty. Kina's words hit him hard in the head. But still, it didn't make sense. Yvonne had no reason not to hate him. Yvonne woke up to find Carloy, and she asked him why he was there. Yvonne continued to examine Carloy, trying to determine if this was a dream or reality. Carloy tried to open his mouth and asked how she was, and Yvonne calmly answered that she was feeling dizzy but fine. Carloy suspects her, who appears overly calm after being poisoned. He asked if she may have known the Duke's plan. Carloy questions her about the poison glass, if she knew about it in advance. Despite her unemotional tone, she answered she wouldn't poison herself, but Carloy remains unconvinced. Yvonne's strange attitude fueled Carloy's crazy speculation, as he became convinced of her drinking the poison wine and remembered what Kina said. If you are blinded by love, you'll lose sight. Kina's voice hovered in Carloy's head. The image of his grandfather who sold the country for his love was there too. Even before the rational judgment was over, Carloy acted instinctively. He grabbed Yvonne's cold hand on the bed. At his unfamiliar appearance, Yvonne turned her head back with surprised eyes and looked at Carloy. Carloy and Yvonne experienced a strange tension in silence, and Yvonne's eyes widened in shock as Carloy told her he was worried with her. Yvonne Dawa was the illegitimate child of the Duke of Dawa, who is said to control the fate, even of the royal family. At twelve, Yvonne de Wa was confined in the Duke's basement, often subjected to beatings. However, she was not the real Yvonne de Wa. After her daughter's death, the Duke brought in an illegitimate child, Lillian Liu. Yvonne de Wa's short answer become a habit, fearing criticism and violence from the Duke. She knows that if she talks too much, the Duke will end her and her mother. 
Yvonne's marriage to the emperor was met with a sudden warning from the Duke of Dewa, requiring her to obey his demands and not be foolish with him, including kindly treatment, a light relationship, and having children. The Duke searched the continent for a high-level wizard to prevent secrets from leaking. Despite doubts, Yvonne agreed to the spell, which would never disappear unless the wizard dies. The Duke said to her, What? Don't worry. A girl who can ruin it once can ruin it again. Yvonne answered that he doesn't know he was the crown prince back then. Yvonne wanted to rip her ears off because the Duke never got tired of talking about what happened 14 years ago, but she hid her feelings. Yvonne is confused by the image of her brutally killing the Duke, and the distortion of the word foolish you to the fact that she saved a boy who was almost killed by being kidnapped? Yvonne is warned to be respectful and watch closely the Emperor, as the Duke's blood doesn't change. Despite her initial doubts, she agrees. Yvonne muttered alone in her empty room. The day before her wedding, Yvonne thought while lying on her bed. If as the Duke says, if she jumps out like a madwoman, will Carloy respond? Would he react because she was his enemy's daughter? When she imagined Carloy in her childhood, but it was unlikely that he would be the same. There is a demon here. Obviously, this has to be the demon's work. He tried to kill my uncles and my father too. On that day, a face that became bloody, with limbs being tied up, was Carloy. He was talking while shedding tears. That hate and spite were visible on his face. Despite her reflection, the man was still in a bad mood, causing him to become angry, while she deemed it wise not to disclose her true identity. Contrary to his solemn words, tears were continually flowing from his young eyes. How harsh must it be for him, who was young, to be in such tears? Lillian comforted little Carloy, who was crying, while urging her to put her dirty hands away. She recalled Carloy screaming, imagining a dirty temper. Carloy initially mistakenly thought Lillian was a boy, but it wasn't her fault. Lillian, not raised to be girly, didn't correct the misunderstanding. She was hopeless. Unless he has ancient wizard class eyes, there is no way he would know it was Lillian back when by looking at her now. Even now, whenever she looked in the mirror, she felt unfamiliar with herself. No, she was rather disgusted with the appearance that resembled the Duke too much. When I go back, I will definitely find you. I will never forget. I promise you, Lou. Yvonne prays for a miracle, promising to forgive past misfortunes and only ask for one this time. Yvonne whispered, as if reciting her prayer, perhaps miracles could happen, and he might remember her. Lou, I'll make sure you don't suffer anyone. I will protect you. She wonders if he'll keep the promises from his youthful days when he didn't know anything. Maybe it's not going to happen. Yvonne realized that hope is a futile illusion grasped by humans with low probability when she saw Carloy at the wedding. Yvonne, nervous and anxious, entered the wedding hall, amidst a familiar threat from her father that her mother's life is within his hand, who wished for her happiness. She looked at Carloy in his eyes with an intense desire for him to recognize her, but his expression only got more and more ugly, he didn't recognize her. Carloy abruptly left the ceremony, leaving Yvonne alone, feeling a break in her heart. It was strange and awkward to see Carloy expressing his anger as he suddenly came into the bedroom. Yvonne felt it then. As she wasn't the old Lillian Lou, Carloy is also not the old cow. Carloy expresses his hatred for Dewa and desire to eliminate those who received the same name in the empire. Yvonne had to abandon his hatred towards her, who was unable to favor her. She had to convince Carloy that minimizing Duke's interference was beneficial. Though Yvonne soon learned that she couldn't even do that, Carloy's hatred seemed to have erased all options other than hostility. She can't be honest with Carloy, and she can't comfortably side with him. Nevertheless, it is impossible to win Carloy's favor by listening to the Duke's words. Yvonne, feeling hopeless, rubbed her wet eyes, a strange occurrence. After a long time of crying, she hoped to escape hell, but instead, she entered another nightmare, unable to do anything about it. She was crying and lonely, muttered to her mother. Despite her noble position, she fell into despair, reminiscing about her past happiness, even if she is poor. Yvonne did not understand the many ways of the Duke of Dewa, who suddenly appeared as her father. For example, why he is harsh to her but so generous to her mother. Denise is advised by Duke not to stay outside for extended periods due to health concerns. She wants to spend time with Lou, but Denise is advised to take care of herself. 
Despite taking her mother hostage, Yvonne couldn't comprehend the Duke's risky no-leak magic actions, leading to increased fear and disgust towards him. Denise, Yvonne's mother, is worried about her daughter's marriage, but is unable to attend due to her condition. She has improved since visiting the Duke's residence, where she has a luxurious bed and servants. Denise wishes to attend the wedding, but the Duke warns her it's too dangerous. She believed Yvonne will be lonely without a family, which make her judgment blurred due to her terminal illness, and didn't know the Duke was manipulative. Even Yvonne initially believed in the Duke, how happy she was to have a father. Now, I'll be your father, the Duke said. Are you happy, Lou? Denise grabbed her daughter's hand with her dry hand. The innocent questions choked her breath. Yvonne smiles, overcoming 14 years of hardship. She resembles the Duke she hates, hiding her feelings. Denise would jump out of the window if she knew Yvonne was threatened by the Duke, as the Duke had a plan to control Yvonne, leaving her mother to protect her. Yvonne promised to visit her mother frequently and now sees her mother receiving daily medication, not coughing. As long as Denise was in the Duke's hand, she wouldn't tell the truth even in her sleep. Besides, who the hell would she be telling it to? She had no one to talk to and no reason to talk about it to. To Carloy, Yvonne is a cruel and evil empress, who resembles the disgusting Duke, who was able to do whatever he wanted, without hesitation. The Duke anticipated Yvonne's eventual abandonment of her moth, and as a backup, he sought a spell to protect her from the possibility of forgetting her mother. Yvonne realized this fact when she drank the poison that was intended for Kina without hesitation. She really wanted to run away. Even running away meant death. She was willing to accept it. Though it was strange, because Carloy's expression was unexpected, she obviously knew that he always wanted her to disappear. But what kind of expression was that? She had a long ongoing dream. It was her dream as Lillian Lou's days. Twelve-year-old Lillian Lou was a young child who lived in a slum, set in a barely inhabited dark forest with her mother in the Duchy of the Wah. Lillian Lou was living a decent life with what she had. A loving mother's voice hugged and whispered to her every night. Denise suffered a terrible illness, requiring expensive medicine. Poverty and illness often mated. But Lillian Lu became responsible for her livelihood at a young age, facing numerous misfortunes. Lillian worked for dark forest thugs, providing money and help in avoiding security forces suspicion. She delivered items, cleaned their dwelling, and labored for a small amount of money. Lillian's lack of guilt and conscience made it easy for the thugs. Lillian encountered Carloy, a young boy tied up in a dirty, thug's den. Initially, he was a victim of thugs, but this was the first time she had seen such a child. The boy warned Lillian to run away, assuming she was innocent. Lillian observes a boy who is focused on others without considering his situation. A thug enters and confronts him about his carelessness, warning him of losing money and being kicked out. A boy's expression of betrayal and contempt towards Lillian Lu was buried in her mind, asking if she was with them. A thug retaliated with a brutal blow, leaving Lillian Lu in fear, akin to witnessing a grown-up beating a child. A beaten boy becomes quiet and tears up, and Lillian advises him to shut up. The boy's bloody face is terrifying, and Lillian rubbed his face with her hand, causing him to look at her with disgust. Young Carloy confronts her, who appears to be a criminal. She wipes his face revealing bloody marks on his face and head. After wiping his face Lillian exclaims, the boy is so pretty. Lillian stuffed the bread she had snuck from the kitchen into his mouth. If he has to close his mouth to be pretty, she'll make it that way. The frowned at her, but ate her dewy bread, a dry bread made with barely any dough. He was more treasured than expected, as he had never tried it before. Lillian offers to give another bread if he say his name. Both rich and poor families experience hunger, but the boy told him if he thinks he was a dog. She will give him panada jam if he will tell his name, he answered that he was Cal. Lillian eagerly observed Cal's dirty appearance, and asked him how old he was, which he revealed to be 13 years old, which is one year older than her. Lillian took her ointment and applied it to Cal's mouth, he groaned in pain. Lillian walks towards the door, counting the steps. She hears a sound, and Cal cries out, urging her not to leave him alone. Lillian approaches Cal and squats next to him, feeling his tension relieved. Cal was kidnapped by someone seeking something from his house. The family hasn't been contacted since receiving the advance payment. She runs errands for the thugs and suspects the thugs might have to kill Cal. 
The boy cries resembling a curse, remained unresolved, despite Lillian's efforts to care for his wounds, provide food, and stay with him at night. In a place filled with blood and tears, Lillian's humanity seemed insufficient for him, as he hated her for not providing much help. Cal would plead her not to leave him, and Lillian felt like a mother bird watching a baby bird. Cal, ask her why is she helping them? Lillian, struggling with her sick mother, is helping those bastards as she has no other source of income. Lillian's financial situation is uncertain due to her need for expensive medicine. Her sudden silence reflects her depression and despair. Cal, feeling uncomfortable due to Lillian's silence, asks her to search his pants. However, Lillian, as if he was a bold boy who knew no shame, put her hand inside Cal's pants. There was something around the waist. It was a pocket. Inside, there was a brooch that looked very expensive. Even for Lillian, who knows nothing, it had a sparkle that only the real thing could exude. The brooch alone sparkled in a dark room. Lillian is frustrated and wanted to give back the pocket as she refused to release him. She believes it would be obvious that he was the one who freed her, but he insists on keeping the pouch. Lillian, however, insists she cannot let him go. Lillian feels strange after seeing Cal being beaten, who seems to have the spirit to tell her to run away. Despite being cherished, he gives her something. She can't guess how expensive it is. Cal, annoyed by Lillian's smile, insists on her frequent visits. Lillian agrees, believing selling this would improve her mother's condition and allow her to accompany Cal for the night. Fourteen years after Lillian Lu became a Vandalwa, her good traits changed naturally. She whispered to herself as if she couldn't see Carloy's disgusting look towards her. In a place where there are so many people, she deceived herself as though she couldn't hear the sharp words of Carloy, who wanted to insult her, like she endured all the violence of the Duke. This is nothing. If you stay still, this will also pass. Carloy criticized Yvonne for not listening to him, revealing that she is the Duke's daughter. She apologized for not responding to his questions, but now used a softer tone to criticize her. Fourteen years of tact and patience were of no use before Carloy. Every time she saw him, Yvonne had to use all of her strength to suppress the urge to grab Carloy by the collar. For fourteen years, Carloy seemed to have a knife in his mouth instead of a tongue. The invisible sword sometimes felt more painful than the Duke's hand. The pain was so painful. She came here with determination, but it was painful enough that the determination was overshadowed dot dot and no one else but the cal of her childhood hates her with all his heart. Of course, Yvonne was more distressed. When Carloy sees her, he wouldn't be thinking of Lillian Liu. Carloy dislikes the Duke's frequent visits to the Empress Palace, which Yvonne finds nerve-wracking as he constantly enters and exits, causing her to feel overwhelmed and potentially insane. The Duke reveals Denise's condition after four months, promising to work harder and can't see her mother if the outcome isn't good. Yvonne, unable to cope with the Duke's words, shrinks due to bad memories. Yvonne, nervous, tries to calm down and ask Carloy to sleep with her, as if she has to pray on her knees. Her words hovered narrowly on her tongue, but the servants of the Empress's palace were glistening their eyes, watching Yvonne's every step of the way. Yvonne was forced to repeat the best she could, asking if he would come to bed at least once, even if Carloy refused. Since she became Empress, Yvonne could not see Denise. She never did. When Carloy suddenly appointed Kina as the queen, she vaguely thought it would be just an extension of that stupid thing. It was more effective to turn the country upside down rather than play around in the bedroom. The queen in Croissant was an unrealistic institution, but Carloy brought Kina to lunch causing her to ponder her feelings for him. She wished to be Kina Rodin, a thought Yvonne would share. She suddenly remembered what Cal had said in her childhood. Cal said he wanted to live well with his loved ones. Yvonne thought at the time that it was a very trivial and insignificant dream for a child to dream of such a precious family. Carloy's voice resembles an old one she doesn't want to remember, revealing a new side to Kina that she's never seen before. Lady Anson visited Mary Anne, a commoner who became the lady-in-waiting due to her service to original Yvonne from her duke days. The Empress is suddenly acting strange, and Lady Anson is waiting for her. Because Yvonne, who was especially cold to them, was too generous to Mary Anne, and the only one to understand Yvonne well was Mary Anne. Mary Anne approached Yvonne, who was drunk and lost her mind. She asked Her Majesty how she did it, but Yvonne shouted to remove the mirrors.
Yvonne, the Duchess's daughter, often resembles the Duke, which is ironic to Marianne, who remembers the real Yvonne resembling her mother. Yvonne was frustrated knowing how she have inherited the Duke's physical characteristics. The Emperor asked Yvonne to prepare for her coronation ceremony, but Marianne knew that he was waiting to find fault. It wasn't enough to ask the attendant and staff, so when the Emperor saw Yvonne, he would scold her himself. The Emperor's words were so cold that even if her voice was gone, Mary Ann wanted to say something to him. On the other hand, the Duke screamed at Yvonne, saying she should not accept the Queen. He said that the coronation ceremony should not be done at any cost. After the Emperor criticized her for what she was doing, the Duke came and verbally abused her repeatedly. Yvonne was at a loss between them. She understood that Yvonne must be going crazy because of that. Though it was not Marianne, but Carloy who saw her desperate eyes, Carloy made an unknown look as he stood in front of her. Yvonne was lost for words and looked up at Carloy. He looked down at her in the same way. He suddenly grabbed her hand. She was going crazy because he was holding her hand the way he did. Then, Yvonne managed to pull the rest of her mind back to the present. There is nothing to benefit from thinking about this. Yvonne expresses her feelings to Carloy, who questions her if she's doing this for him, causing her head to cool down. Yvonne's head cooled after hearing Carloy's question, as she knew she wasn't doing it for Carloy. She was just doing nothing because she can't do anything. Yvonne, sore and unable to breathe, cried on a bed. After Carloy's departure, she impulsively prepared for the Queen's ceremony. Lillian struggled to sell the valuable brooch due to refusal from rural jewelers and their lack of payment. She managed to sell it to a small city jeweler. Denise questions Lillian where she get those medicine, but Lillian didn't answer her questions. She just believes she can trust her child's strength and the improved effects of the new medicine, which is even better than her old one, despite her weak body. For days, the thugs left Cal untouched, and seeing them this way, it looked like something had happened. Lillian notices the thugs' faces and is convinced they were ordered to kill Cal. She holds a gold coin in her hand, considering turning away from the trapped boy to keep the money she received, but letting him die would eventually become bad money. Lillian enters a room with guilt, seeing his face brighten. Cal moves his head towards Lillian, directing it towards her. Lillian decides to save the kid. There was only one way for Lillian to release Cal without being suspected, for that place to collapse in the rain. Though she was ambitiously explaining her plan, Cal said that curtly. He doesn't want to. Have you been trapped here for so long that you forgot, or have you finally gone crazy? He said he doesn't want it, even though she said she would save him. Lillian is questioned about her sudden disappearance and the plan to kill Cal, but Cal remains calm and knows the truth. Carloy, tired of long imprisonment, is no longer a child who believes he will return alive. He should curse at Lillian, as she is not used to his calm demeanor. Lillian hit Cal's head, stating that violence is the most convincing method to persuade him. She slapped him and argued that if he died, it would be better for him to live and take revenge. Lillian shook her head, but a hasty voice sprang out behind her, revealing he wanted to go. Lillian smiled and relieved. Cal invites Lillian to his spacious house with a physician for her mother. Lillian asks Cal to take care of himself first, and Cal promises to help Lillian run away and pay off his debt. Cal asked with a suspicious face, as the rain was pouring in, Lillian put flume and stones all over the lair while the thugs were busy checking the other places in this mess. Lillian attached a sparsio stone to her and Cal's bodies, releasing him after two weeks. However, a loud noise collapsed a ceiling above Lillian, and she found Cal covering her. Cal was hit by a collapsed ceiling, causing a groan from his mouth. He explains that he did it because there was a person in front of him. Oh, Lillian thanks him for saving her. Lillian felt that it was time for them to get out of here. Soon, the place would collapse, and the thugs would come. Carloy eagerly and firmly held Lillian's hand as if it was his only rope. Cal questions Lillian's saving efforts, but she answered the same as him, stating it's because of their humanity. She could hear Cal laughing from behind her back. Rain poured heavily. Lillian Lou did not like rain. However, since she met Cal, Lillian would look outside on rainy days. It was the same when she entered the duchy and lived as a Vandawa. Because Cal was the only good deed Lillian Lou ever did in her life. The only thing she was proud of in her own life. On rainy days, she used to think of it. The short periods of time when she could laugh and talk without anyone noticing.
Yvonne, observing cold raindrops, recalled a conversation with the Duke about arranging the Queen's ceremony, while the Duke was raging. The Duke is under pressure to remove the Queen from her position, and suggests to poison her, but fears that if she is poisoned during the coronation ceremony, they will think it was him. You're a person who can handle that much pressure, Duke. The woman who was neither the royal family nor the Queen yet is killed, Yvonne said to the Duke. He appeared eager and prepared to kill Kina Rodin, having received the list of people and documents for the Queen's coronation ceremony. Preparation. She couldn't do it, Yvonne thought so as she felt the raindrops. It is as inevitable as the water falling from top to bottom. As she turned to where the maid's voice was, she saw Carloy standing there. He blames her for going to and from a garden, he doesn't care about. He seemed to have left because he wasn't interested in Yvonne. Carloy's words were hurtful and unkind. Yvonne deemed him stupid and decided to ignore him, but her body didn't cooperate and hugged him. Carloy asked her what was wrong. Yvonne didn't answer and reflects on her past actions and wishes Carloy would remember similar situations. When she saw he brush his cloth as if she's dirty, she desires to hang her neck. She could see Lady Kina standing with her eyes shining behind him. Yvonne contemplates secretly obtaining an antidote and feeding Kina in advance, who's feeling embarrassed. She exits the indoor garden, barely pressed her irritation. Meanwhile, Lillian and Cal were getting hit and swept around, causing their bodies to hurt. Whenever she bleeds, he stops and heals Lillian's wounds. Lillian always thought that children from precious families were picky. The children, tired from the rain, hid in a cave. Near the cave's entrance were flowers swaying dangerously from the rain and wind. Cal asked their next destination. Lillian told him that they would go to Marquia de Lancy, a safe and unrelated to Duchy place. He told he to return home quickly as her mom will be worried and ask her to leave the Duchy and go to Marquia to sell the brooch for gold coins. Cal promised her he will find her. Cal grabbed a few gold coins and put the rest next to Lillian. And that was not enough, he even took off his coat and covered Lillian. Cal is regretful for not having anything to give, and he wishes to find her when he returns. He wants to give her something, but the brooch has been sold. He must go quickly, and he prefers if they find her alone to avoid suspicions. She then told him her full name as Lillian Liu, as she think he would thought she was a boy. But he was calm, as if he already knew from the beginning. A young boy she's known for 10 days, is growing from a child to an adult in just two weeks. Cal promised to find her soon and tries to comfort her. Cal leaves the cave and runs. Yvonne Delois woke up to the Imperial Palace ceiling, a masterpiece depicting an emperor and an empress who died together due to their love. Carloy, who appeared in her dreams, appeared to her after waking up. He was confused about the empress, muttering about a name, Cal. She thought that if she answered harshly, he would disappear. But unexpectedly, Carloy suddenly grabbed Yvonne's hand. The Emperor and Empress were in a tense silence after he told her he was worried. Yvonne pulled away her hand to avoid a heartfelt moment. Carloy felt emptiness as her hand slipped away, and she apologized for wasting his time despite being busy. He questioned if Yvonne's feelings were mistaken and wondered if he was trying something useless. He expressed his happiness that Yvonne woke up safely. Carloy's words hurt Yvonne, who was upset. He doubted if he offended her, but Yvonne asked him to rest as he was shocked by what happened. It was Yvonne that needs to rest and he need to reconsider his hasty judgments. He leaves her bedroom silently, Yvonne only take a deep breath after Carloy's departure. Yvonne's thoughts are interrupted by Marloni, a physician of the Duke. She thinks that he will doubt how she survived from poison, and might questions her about the antidote, her knowledge, and her ability to obtain it. The physician unexpectedly revealed that the Emperor poured an antidote for Yvonne to escape death after drinking poison. Marloni didn't notice Yvonne already had the antidote. Yvonne was confused, since it was Carloy who saved her, he would rather be compassionate if he felt bad at all but Carloy seemed unable to even do that. The doctor examined Yvonne who suffered physical violence from the Duke that caused visible scars. When marriage to the Emperor was settled, he threatened to use transfer magic, but the scar couldn't be transferred. Marloni covered up blemishes, but required periodic prescriptions. Carloy asked Gordon about the Empress's thoughts on the Emperor, but Gordon couldn't provide a clear answer. He then questioned if the Empress disliked him, Gordon answered, considering her strange behavior and position, she will not like the Emperor. 
Carloy contemplates his feelings of hostility and hate towards the Duke, while the Empress appears moderate and oblivious, indicating that she does not harbor any genuine interest in him. Yvonne's vague attitude makes it questionable if she would follow Carloy. They need to get closer to the Empress. Gordon asks Carloy what to do first, as he believes he must meet a woman before getting close to her. The day after Yvonne woke up, the Duke visited the Empress's palace and asked what happened. Yvonne questions if the Duke made a mistake, but the Duke and glares at Yvonne. He asks if Yvonne tried something stupid. Yvonne is questioned by the Duke about her survival. She explains that she was made to drink an antidote by the Emperor, which she believes was a way to escape death. Yvonne also mentions that the Emperor's use of antidotes may have been a form of embarrassment. Mary enter the room with the Emperor's servants holding flower baskets. The Duke of Delu reads a card expressing hope for the Empress recovery. Light yellow flowers filled the drawing room with their scent. The Duke throws away the card and opens the jewelry box, leaving a distorted impression. The Emperor sent a jewel box containing the Wolf's Tears necklace, a famous symbol of the Empresses of Croissant. Yvonne had never received it, that's why the Duke was annoyed. The Duke asked Yvonne what she talked about with the Emperor. She replied that he was worried. Yvonne lost in thought, questions by the Duke about them planning together behind his back. Yvonne told him that she had came from the dead and the person who changed is the Emperor. The Duke closes the jewelry box without answering, and cautiously calls her to keep an eye on how the Emperor changes. Carloy and Kina are having tea time in the Imperial Palace Garden. They discuss about him sending the necklace to the Empress. The Marquis Rodin told him that what he did greatly affect Kina and some nobles will join the Duke. The Marquis of Rodin, aware of Carloy and Kina's attempts to use the Empress to attack the Duke, but only know that Kina volunteered due to her love for Carloy. Despite being falsely accused, Kina remains queen. Carloy warns the disgruntled Marquis of Rodin to stop the Duke's faction from acting up. The Marquis expresses his dissatisfaction with his daughter's blatant side with the Emperor and reminisces about the old saying that raising a child is no use. The Emperor's plan is to acknowledge the existence of the Empress. Carloy was asked if he already received a response from Yvonne, but he remained silent. Yvonne and Mary Anne were surprised to learn that His Majesty had sent her a message to have dinner at the Palace Annex and sent her flowers. Yvonne is preparing to confront Carloy and create a plan. She promises to be on time and provide an answer. Anson and Rune leave the flowers in her bedroom, while Mary Anne watches suspiciously. Yvonne couldn't attend dinner with Carloy due to a fever caused by flowers sent by Carloy. Lady Anson accidentally brought Lithunia flowers to the bedroom cabinet, unaware of their existence. Lady Anson questions the Emperor's knowledge of Her Majesty's inability to get close to Lithunia flowers and believes the Emperor is determined to harm the Empress, but Marianne dismisses this theory and told them to get out. Marianne told her not to believe Lady Anson. Lady Rune informs Carloy that they can't have dinner with him because of Yvonne's sudden illness. Carloy sees Yvonne, who appears to be feeling well, but has a frown on her eyebrows. Carloy is annoyed and asked if she is well and asked if she feels sorry but which makes him feeling embarrassed. Yvonne did see it coming, so she's not surprised. He offered to take a seat, but she and her handmaidens noticed the decorations on the table, including Lithunia flowers. Yvonne was shocked to saw a vase with Lithuania flower while her maid was whispering about the true intentions of the emperor. Carloy asked him the reason for not sitting down while her maid explained that if she gets near Lithuania flower then she would feel sick. He then understands and commands the maid to take the flowers away. Carloy was annoyed to know that she was just like the Duke and apologized for not knowing. Yvonne clenched her hand again while Carloy was confused if there is anything else that doesn't suit her. Yvonne asked him if he wanted to make her life difficult and just use another method to use. He was confused about what she was talking about. Yvonne explained that the flower he sent yesterday was mixed with Lithuania and affected her body, but Carloy asked why didn't she just check it more carefully that leads to Yvonne being upset of him not apologizing instead of blaming her. She added that she can't also eat peach because it will cause her asthma. Carloy was annoyed knowing all her characteristics are similar to the Duke. She felt embarrassed and angry after hearing what he said and reminding him if he didn't like her. He should just stay away from her like what he did before. 
Talking so intimately with her is not her fault and asking him not to complain about her while her tears were flowing down. He just realized those hurtful words he said and became regretful. He explained that he was like this not because he hates her. He just can't differentiate her from the Duke. She realized how deep he hates her while Carloy changed the topic and inquired about the tear of the wolf and told her he should have given it to her a long time ago and not treating her like a queen is his fault. He was trying to compensate for his wrongdoing and a keg to consider accepting them. Yvonne answered that it was okay while Carloy was relieved to hear her answer and asked to meet occasionally and excuse himself. Yvonne noticed how Carloy was forcing himself to smile and realized that he will not change. Carloy asked the doctor about his illness as he felt uncomfortable but the doctors find him normal. He grabs the medicine out of their hand and drink it immediately and commanded them to get out. The doctors reminded him the symptoms can come back if her overwork himself and can't use the medicine more than recommended. He felt uneasiness after seeing the image of Lou from Delua's daughter. He asked if Arcel said it anything else while Gordon informed him that Arcel would come back soon. Gordon asked the Emperor if he is worried about Bernie's silence, but he is not concerned about them, but he has a personal request. He can't wait any longer and grabs the medicine again and drinks it. One week later, at the Queen Palace, the Duke of Delua asked Yvonne if the Emperor invited her for dinner and discussed the Emperor's treatment with her is different from Marquis Rodin's daughter. She remembered how the maid talked about how hospitable Carloy to Marquis Rodin and his daughter while Carloy and her were only silent when they were together. Duke de Lua shouted angrily with Marquis Rodin opposing him, while the Emperor only asked Yvonne for one dinner and the date for coronation really angers him. He asked if Yvonne was keeping an eye on Rodin's daughter while Yvonne explained that she didn't know because she's always with the Emperor. Duke de Lua shouted angrily at Yvonne commanding her to do something and teach her some lessons. Yvonne was caught between him and the Emperor, if she did something to his lover, he wouldn't leave her alone. She agreed and handed a letter to her mother. He grabbed the letter and told her to find the weakness of the royal consort, then he sent the letter. Carloy was remembering Yvonne's different facial expressions and became irritated, causing him to drink the medicine again. Gordon asked if he really hated the queen much. He replied that he can't stand her. Yvonne arrived at the garden while Carloy was stunned with her beauty, fake his smile and asked her to sit. He apologized for neglecting her a little while and prepared for a meal in the garden. He compliments her necklace, but Yvonne was confused by the way he looked as if he was uncomfortable seeing the necklace on her. He chose the garden since he noticed she loves flowers. Yvonne didn't actually like flowers, but she answered Carloy that she really love it. Carloy was surprised to her answer while Yvonne remembered the young Carloy who loves flowers. Carloy looked at her eyes and remembered something similar and mentioned that there is someone that didn't keep their promise and he keeps thinking about that. Yvonne is thinking if he is talking about her as Lillian Rue. She tried to say her name, but there is something that keeps her not to talk. The Bernie's witch magic that forbids her to tell the secret thus she can't even say even a word. Carloy reminded her that Abra Ruff is coming. It is the day celebrated in honor of the White Wolf. She remembered that last year, she was dismissed from the Abra event of the royalty and wondered why he mentioned it to her. The emperor asks her to prepare for the royal festival this time together with the royal concubine. Yvonne felt the pain knowing that this is only a formality, but even if this is only a formality, he should have told her first, the queen before the royal concubine. She accepted it without complaining while Carloy excuses himself. She replied that he didn't have to care about her. While signing some documents, he remembered Yvonne's appearance which became thinner. Her eyes that were similar to Lillian and her statement to not care about her caused him a headache. Yvonne received a letter from her father that the emperor is having a conspiracy. Take advantage of her so that the concubine can go freely. The duke wants her to request to sleep in the same bed with the king. She remembered how she was ruthlessly rejected by Carloy when she asked to sleep with her. But she has to do it as it is the duke's command. Her maid suggests her to invite the king first. Though she didn't want to be hated again, she couldn't see her mother forever.
The emperor was surprised to receive a letter from Yvonne as she hasn't taken the initiative to ask for it. He told Gordon that he has to go to the queen's palace. He is wondering if she really invited him to have tea only or any other intentions. Yvonne and Carloy were having tea while he was thinking if she actually only wanted to drink tea until Yvonne asked him if he could visit her bedroom. He was shocked from what he heard and asked again. Yvonne repeated what she said and saw Carloy's stunned face. He was disappointed but if really wanted to manipulate the queen, he would have to do it someday. But he was confused with her face and understood that it was the duke's trick to try him. He agreed while Yvonne was surprised with his answer. Carloy told her that he will come over tonight. He wanted to check the situation and find Yvonne's reaction just in acting. He told her that it is fine if she doesn't like it but Yvonne disagreed and answered that it will probably be alright. Mary Ann noticed that the emperor didn't touch the cakes. Gordon told her that the emperor enjoyed hordui bread. Yvonne was surprised to know that Carloy liked hordui bread. She remembered how she stocked the bread in his mouth and asked the maid to get some and prepare piata jam. Yvonne noticed Carloy's embarrassed face and told him if he asked her, she already had prepared it. He answered that he didn't like it that much, but she revealed that she really likes it. Carloy was surprised she eats that kind of bread and wondered if she was just acting. Yvonne revealed that she was used to this kind of bread and jam since it came from Dalua territory. He was surprised that the duke's daughter who is the queen Alcetet this kind of bread. Carloy was getting ready and even dank a lot of medicine to suppress his stomachache before going to Yvonne's bedroom. Gordon was worried for him not to get some sleep in the queen's bedroom and suggested to do it on another day, but the emperor refused because it was better to do it sooner than later. Gordon was worried that the queen might take orders from the duke and take action against the emperor. He reassured him not to worry too much. Yvonne is also preparing and is also uncomfortable the emperor might lose his mind and wonder why Kuroyo still remembers Lillian Lu. She encourages herself that she will be able to stand him. Suddenly, the emperor had arrived. Carloy is truly multifaceted and a person that makes her angry. There was awkwardness between the two when Yvonne asked Carloy if he is unwell as he don't look so good. Gordon rushed inside the bedroom and shouted at Yvonne asking what happened. She looked at his eyes wondering if this is how others look at her, which thinks that she can kill the emperor. She urges Mary Ann to call for the emperor's doctor. The emperor's doctor asked if he was bloated and nagged him of taking an overdose of medicine. He also asked if he encountered any inconvenience or discomfort while Yvonne realized that she is the reason for his discomfort that leads to him being sick. Carloy told the doctor that he is fine and just avi him the medicine. Gordon didn't want to leave him but Carloy asked him what he would do and realized his mistake. He faced Yvonne and apologized and asked for any punishment but Yvonne told him that if she really wanted to harm the emperor, she would have acted a long time ago. Carloy was surprised to hear it from Yvonne. Carloy apologizes while Yvonne told him that he finds it very inconvenient and she doesn't know if the pain reliever will work. It will only relieve his spasm but not his discomfort. He was shocked and explained that he's just busy with work lately. He asked her to sleep while thinking that she was the one that forced him to come for the duke's sake and assured her that he won't do anything. She approaches the bed while Carloy is restraining himself thinking that she was the duke's daughter. He can't focus and pretends to be sleeping in one position. Suddenly he felt that Yvonne woke up but didn't open the door. He was assuming that she went to the garden. He wondered what she was doing there in the middle of the night. He followed her and saw a small garden, the garden that the previous emperor gave to his empress who he loved so much. He saw Lillian Lu again and rub his eyes and asked Yvonne the reason she hadn't slept. She didn't answer but asked him if he was coming back to the emperor's palace but answered her that he just followed her because he couldn't sleep. He looked around the garden and saw the vibrant colors of the flowers and asked her if she didn't get tired admiring the flowers whenever she was bored. She wants to answer that it helps with boosting her sustainability to endure time and wants to ask him also why he spends so much time in the garden, the things that she can never say out loud. She answered that it helps clear the thoughts in her mind while he asked again the things she wanted to completely forget. 
Yvonne answered him honestly that she was thinking the reason of her his strange attitude towards her which he hates so much. He was surprised and told her that she didn't hate her. He can't like her either and thought it was unfair, but he really had no other choices and remembered what the Dalua did to him and to Lillian. Yvonne told him that she already knew and she knew very well. He remembered it was the same she said during the wedding day with the same facial expression, but this day is very different. He knew that it wasn't her fault. Yvonne revealed that she understands him and he didn't have to do so in such length. Carloy returned the question to Yvonne who sent him to hate him so much, but Yvonne revealed that she didn't hate him. He was relieved that he was hated by her and asked to come to his palace if she was uncomfortable, but she refused. Walking back to the queen's bedroom, Carloy asked her what kind of father is the duke to her. She hesitated and answered that he is just like the other fathers. He concluded that Yvonne is not as close to the duke as what he exaggerated. Next in the morning, the Marquis of Rodin was anxious that the neutral nobles immediately sided with the Duke within a few days. He asked the Emperor about his plan to take advantage of the Queen, but it seems that he was the one being used. At this rate, the law abolishing the Imperial Queen Concubine will be passed. The Emperor reminds him about his voice. The Marquis asked if it is really necessary to get close to the Queen. He answered that even if they or the Duke mobilize the army, there will be a civil war, and it will be the queen who can give him the information he needed. The Marquis was hesitant if Yvonne will do that, but Carloy assured him that he needed to make it possible, and what he wanted the Marquis to do is keep an eye on the merchants and nobles. Carloy really needs to increase his supporters. The Delua and Anson are in the same boat while Croydon and Rodin shook hands still there is only one left he needs help with. Kiana also added that the Delua army can't mobilize their army if the Margrave of Marchia is still in neutral. The Emperor knew that the Margrave Marchia wouldn't support him as he is an important person in the defense of the border. Kiana asked what he will do, will he get help from the Duchess Duenya? But some say she was mentally retarded but others said that she passed away quietly. Carloy told her that he will take care of that part and reminded her to do her part in keeping an eye on the Queen and to find the smallest trace on that incident. He also added to search for a pin with jewel since the Duke can't destroy it since it was a royal treasure containing ancient magic. Kiana told him that they need to search directly into the Delua territory and suggested the help of the Queen but Carloy revealed that Yvonne still doesn't quite believe him. She recommended spending more time at least three times a week with Yvonne, much better if it is every night. Gordon informed Carloy that the Duke of Delua wants to talk with him. He asked the reason for him coming to see him. The Duke directly told him that he wants to reopen the nobles' parliament and suggested not to delay it. Carloy looked at his arrogant face who seemed to fully plan the law abolishing the imperial concubine. He told the Duke that even hell will not accept him. The Duke sarcastically told him that no one can understand his heart other than him and that his orders were like this. The Duke's smile disgusted Carloy as he remembered his encounter with the Duke when he was a child. Carloy thought the Duke smiled because he really likes him, but he knew better now that the Duke's smile is only a mask. He asked if he really wanted him to hold a meeting for the House of Peers, but explained that he can't just give it without getting anything in return. The Duke told Carloy that if he accept one condition, then he will leave Rodin's business alone and asked to spend the night with the Queen in the Imperial Bedroom as soon as possible. Carloy remembered the Imperial Bedroom where her mother, together with a baby in her womb, died. He asked the Duke really think that public opinion will easier to move that way because it will seem like he finally accepted the Queen and submitted to him. Duke de Lua replied that he was only suggesting a natural event and will leave Rodin's business if he do his part on sleeping with the queen. Carloy reminded him that he haven't won just because his daughter is next to him and what he values is in his hands. Duke de Lua laughed and said that anything that is not most valuable is meaningless. Carloy was confused asking that the queen means nothing to him. The Duke explained that it isn't what he means but situations can always change. 
he reminded him the previous king and queen who were harsh on him with studies as they believe Carloy resembles his grandfather too much who almost brought the country to ruins because of love. He added that the king is not different with his grandfather. He just haven't go berserk yet. Carloy told him to hope he wouldn't go berserk because if her is, he will take the duke's head. The duke told him that his daughter inherited his blood and she won't stay still as the emperor wished for too long. Carloy paused from what the duke said while he told him to let the queen who was loved so that she wouldn't be like her father. The duke was staring at Yvonne intently and told her he was sure the king didn't lay a finger on her and asked if he said anything. Yvonne revealed that he didn't say much and just wanted not to hate her. The duke believed Carloy was trying everything and told Yvonne that it was time for her to meet her mother, but she needs the king's permission first. She was shocked while the duke said that she has to make a good excuse for going to Dalua territory since I's very far. He informed her to take the king's permission first and reveals that the king will summon her to the royal chamber soon and told her to take advantage of that opportunity. The maids showed many flowers that were sent by the emperor. Yvonne knew very well that Carloy doesn't even like flowers while she told the maids to relay her message of gratefulness for the gift. Carloy didn't bother to show his face, yet he wants to use her. Carloy was busy signing documents when he remembered what the duke said to him about Yvonne who inherited the duke's blood and he is not sure how to react when he sees her. He was irritated that all he could come up with was sending her flowers, yet he had to take her to the royal chamber in three days. A man named Dossal disrupted him. He was an orphaned war servant from Maha. He brought him when he was 15 and the only person he can confide in. Carloy asked for any report. While Ossel told him that Verney was quiet and peaceful and there were no preparations for a war. Carloy thought that it was odd since Verney is a country that has always been building its army to attack Croyson, it's as if they were trying to show off that they're doing well. Ossel asked Carloy if there's anything he wants to know. Carloy told him to just tell him. Ossel was hesitant, but he eventually revealed that the person he was looking for wasn't in Verney even in Dalua. He explained that the place where the incident took place and even nearby villages were massacred by the Duke. Carloy was anxious and thought that their icy dark forest that they haven't investigated properly, but also revealed that he couldn't get there. Carloy was surprised and asked him to explain in detail. Asal explained that there is a spell cast on the forest to permit only blood relatives of the Dalua to enter. Carloy was confused since no one in House Dalua is capable of casting magic, but Ossel explained that the magician might not be a blood relative, and anyone can use the blood of the head of the household to cast the spell but requires a certain amount of crushed blood as well. Carloy remembered that the royal families of each country are direct descendants of their very first ancestors however, Krua, which is the first ancestors of the Croisan are not the Croitans, but the Daluas. This is what started the power struggle between Daluas and Croitans. Asal added that he has seen the place quite often when he was young and that the forest was not blocked off to hide anything and suggested to stop searching because there was nothing left there. Carloist ped him to speak, but Asal insisted that the person he's looking for is already dead. Carloy believes that Lou definitely escapes from there and knows she was somewhere. Ossel asked the importance of it since it was 10 years ago and it won't change anything. Carloy answered that it changes everything Whip seemed dejected and sad while asking Ossel to leave him. The emperor asked his concubine the reason to see him. She told him that she already found someone who knows about the brooch he was looking for. A man of a jewelry shop in Dalua told them that he purchased the brooch 14 years ago from a dirty child. He thought that the brooch was fake and sold it in very cheap price. But soldiers from the Duke residence came to him with the brooch and interrogated him, then gave him a tremendous sum of money as a reward. Then one day, he ran into one of those soldiers at a pub and asked about the incident. Carloy clenched, while the woman explained that the soldiers told him that the child died because she was invited into a crime, but Carloy didn't believe it. The woman continued and explained that the soldier said that they killed the child's mother and burned down the entire village and piled the corpse and set them all on fire. Carloy shattered the cup with his hand after hearing those stories, and he can't explain his anxiety.
Gordon suggested to postpone the night at the royal chamber, but he insisted that nothing happened to postpone it. His face is like someone left by soul and still wants to believe he didn't hear what might happen to Lou because he can't accept that nor this can't be the end. The 14 years he endured can't be in vain. While entering the royal chamber, he heard whispers calling his name and blaming him. He snapped out of it when he heard Yvonne calling him while recognizing her. She asked if he was unwell as she noticed his hand was injured. He apologized and asked that he would lie down and go to sleep. Yvonne observed him while sleeping thinking that he is that uncomfortable being with her. Carloy was dreaming about his childhood, reaching his mother but the Empress told him to hold back his feelings. His mother's appearance suddenly changes while saying that the Duke must be very satisfied he got rid of her and the child in her womb because Carloy came back alive causing the Duke to become berserk while squeezing his hands. She blamed him for her death while he heard Lillian calling to help him but she was eaten by the floor. Carloy trembled in fear as he called for her. Suddenly, she grabbed his neck blaming him for her death. Yvonne was woken up by Carloy's sudden call of her original name, Lou. She asked if he was fine, but Carloy was in an illusion seeing her as a dead person who kept blaming him. He pursed his lips and walked outside the room. He threatened that he would kill those who would follow him, but Yvonne runs to follow him as she was sure he shouted her name. Yvonne stared at Carloy who was coughing while tears could be seen on his eyes. Then she saw the young Carloy, called his name and held his hand. Carloy looked at her and saw the face of Lillian Lou, which made his heart ache. Tears started flowing from his eyes as he whispered that he shouldn't have left her behind while trembling and claiming he killed her. Yvonne started shaking as she heard him apologizing to Lillian Lou. She can feel his anxiety thinking why he's still stuck in the past and why he was calling that useless name while she wept uncontrollably. Yvonne tried to reveal she was here and she didn't die because she was right in front of him, but the magician spell was stopping her to tell the truth. Carloy told her not to cry while looking at Lou, because I was all his fault. Yvonne couldn't say a single word, but she managed to wept together with him and share the burden in his heart. Carloy woke up in the royal chamber while thinking where Yvonne went. Gordon explained that he fainted yesterday and nagged him for taking too many sedatives. He was confused about Yvonne's crying face if it's real or just a dream. Gordon asked the reason for him crying then he finally realized that what he saw yesterday was real while well, Gordon told him that he didn't follow him but he saw clearly he was crying. He added that the queen is very strange and he can't figure out the reason the queen wept so sadly. Carloy confirmed if the queen really wept. Gordon explained that tears kept rolling down her face and wept together with Carloy the entire time. Yet the queen didn't say a single word and left at dawn. Carloy was speechless and realized that what happened last night was not a dream. What's the point of apologizing to someone when she's no longer here? He can't imagine his life without Lou and didn't know what to do anymore. The emperor is about to visit Yvonne when he hears the maid telling Yvonne to be more careful about the scattered tea set on the floor. He entered the room seeing a maid tending to Yvonne's wounded feet. He rushed to her angrily asking what is the matter with her and if she's enjoying hurting herself. Yvonne was surprised to see him grabbing her feet while telling her that she acts like it doesn't concern her. He didn't finish his sentence realizing his embarrassed situation. He thought that he must be crazy and definitely lost it. The maid asked that she will do it and tend to the queen. Yvonne told him that she didn't expect he would come soon while Carloy said to her that if he had come later, she would have stabbed herself with a blade. She cleared that it was really an accident. He glanced at her thinking if she really cried last night. He didn't know the reason why he saw Lou on her face since they don't look alike at all. He was about to open up last night's episode when Yvonne told him not to worry since she already erased it from her memory. Carloy noticed her expressionless face, but he kept recalling her tears and asked the reason for her actions last night. 
Yvonne was shocked with the unexpected question and told that she has a nightmare as an excuse. Carloy blushed at the reason for asking such stupid question. Yvonne changed the topic and asked for his permission to visit the Dalua territory. He asked the reason for visiting Dalua while Yvonne explained she wanted to visit her mother's grave and asked again if she could visit. Carloy was hesitant since Dalua was very far and it takes 20 days to travel back and forth. Yvonne insisted she can use magic stone to travel faster while Carloy asked if the Duke Owl will go with her and she confirmed it. He agreed if she could return in two weeks. Yvonne cannot contain her happiness and thank him wholeheartedly while giving a big smile. Carloy was mesmerized with her smile and didn't notice his tea spilling. Embarrassed, he said that there is one condition and that is to bring with her a guard to keep on her side. Yvonne immediately agrees to his condition while Carloy finds her cute. He paused as he realized what he was thinking and immediately stood. He hesitated to say it, but he asked her not to let the Duke hear about what happened last night. Yvonne explained that she didn't tell her father every little thing like that as she does not share everything thoughtlessly with the Duke. Carloy remembered his grandfather being the Duke's puppet, and there's this Croydon unwritten rule not to trust the Deluas. So he told himself that Yvonne should never ever be, but after looking at her he just answered that he does understand. She was limping trying to see him out, but Carloy was worried and told her she didn't need to see him out, while Yvonne smiled and told him she's fine. Gordon asked if he really let her go to Dalua, but Carloy told him that it will be a good thing for him since he will be sending Ossel as the guard. Carloy informed Ossel that he will send him as Yvonne's guard. Ossel was surprised while Carloy was irritated to see him interested with the Queen. He explained that his job is to keep an eye on both the Duke and the Queen and find out anything and everything he can. Ossel told him that won't bring anyone back from the dead. Carloy feels the pain and tells him he's not telling him to find the child. Remembering what Ossel said, Carloy didn't want to believe him, but if Lou really was dead, what should he do because she's the only reason he's holding out for 14 years? He met with the Duke explaining that he permitted the Queen's visit to Dalua territory. He told him he heard that his soldiers bought his brooch from a jeweler 14 years ago, which is the Eye of Croydon, and asked that it's odd since he told him that he never even heard of it. The Duke remembered and ordered someone to find it, but lost due to their negligence and punished them. Carloy asked if he killed them all. He denied it saying he didn't know what he meant, but Carloy told him that there's no reason to keep it since he is not a Croydon and told him to return it to his, his owner. The Duke told him if it's valuable then it should return on his own to its owner, but since Carloy is adamant he will search the area once again. Yvonne and the Duke had arrived at the Dalua territory. She was about to rush towards her mother when the Duke grabbed her and reminded her to do something first. Yvonne realized that he wants her to see the magician first before she sees her mom. On her way, Ossel jumped in front of her. She realized that he is the guard Carloy was talking about. He introduced his name and followed her inside the castle. She told him she needs to change her outfit and allow him to stand in front of the door. Her room has all kinds of spells cast on it, so also probably won't be able to find anything there. A man told her that it's been a while and saw a black hooded person whose name was Fiori. He started casting the spell and saw that Yvonne made so many attempts to say the truth and asked if she was that desperate to speak up. He told her she didn't need to worry because he will not say anything to the Duke but it's best if she stops resisting, and reminded her that her mother is still alive, eyes too early to try any funny business. Yvonne told him that she read a book that every few people can cast advanced magic even in Verney and asked the reason for following the Duke's order. The magician told her that it was obviously easier to earn money in wealthy Croyson than in impoverished Verney, and most of all, he can't go back to Verney anymore as he committed a serious crime. Communicating with Croyson is a serious crime in Verney. Yvonne remembered him. He was here 14 years ago and asked him what he was doing for the Duke that time. The man told her to not think anything because the stronger her sense of self, the unhappier she will be and reminded that her mother is important to her that she should go now. There is a tower in the most secluded area of the Duke's mansion. 
Two things that the Duke never wants the world to know were hidden there. The first is a coffin on the floor, where the dead body of real Yvonne lies. The other is her mom, Denise, who stays on the floor right underneath. In order to prevent anyone that the Duke does not permit from entering the tower, several layers of protective spells using his blood were cast on it. Yvonne told Ossel that he can't come inside because of the barrier. She told him that her mother's corpse is the only thing that lies there, but Ossel hesitated. Yvonne told him that she would assume he had some duty other than to guard him. With this, Ossel backed down. Yvonne opened the door showing the face of her mother, who was happy to you her again. Her mother asked the Riasan for hair losing weight after getting married, and regretted that she should have gone with her even if she were to die in the way. Yvonne steeps her thinking like that as they get to see each other once a year. Asl climbed up a tree to look inside the tower, but he couldn't see through the window. All that magic in the building screams that something is fishy there. He saw a woman getting outside the tower. The shocked woman informed him that Yvonne wishes to sleep in the tower tonight. Asl was surprised knowing Yvonne will sleep there with a corpse, but the woman corrected him that it was ashes not corpse. Asl still finds the tower really fishy. On the other hand, Carloy was imagining the young Lou, questioning if it's a dream. He holds her face thinking that H is alive because of her. He stopped when the child's face changed into Yvonne's face and he became confused. Yvonne reaches for him to kiss him. He then wheezes up from the dream blushing, claiming he has lost to have such a dream. This I all because of that night in the royal chamber. Have he already lost control because of his desperate desire for Lou to be alive? If he hadn't eaten her like that, he wouldn't be having those dreams. Still, how could he mistake the daughter of Delua for Lou? But most of all, why in the world was Yvonne crying like that? After that night, he can't see any resemblance to the Duke in Yvonne. He guess he won't be able to sleep since Yvonne is not there. Gordon was thinking if there has been something happening to the Emperor because all through the week, he has slept poorly and woke up so early. Carloy asked about minimizing the guards while Gordon told him that he already did after he mentioned Lexum Sorda and notified them that he wished to rest at the La Sordio Palace. La Sordio is a palace that was built in the territory of Lexum Sorda, which used to be the Solta Kingdom. Croissant royalty frequents the palace on vacation because of its beautiful scenery. The previous queen enjoyed that palace. Gordon asked Carloy if he planned to visit the Duchess Duenya. Carloy questions how he knows that Duchess Duenya is there since even the Deluas don't know about this. Gordon explained that he served to kings before. It was a confidential matter, however, he was the one who handled it. Gordon asked that Duchess Duenya nearly lost control since the passing of her younger sister, the previous queen, Queen Adelaide. He still remembers what she did the last time he saw her and questioned how could she possibly help him. Carloy answered that they will find out when they get there. They arrived at La Sordio. Carloy called Duenya. Alexis Duenya is the head of House Duenya, one of the founding families of Croissant. Gordon was surprised to see her. Rumors say she has lost control but looks absolutely fine. Duenya thought Carloy would never come to see her again and reminded him that he shouldn't seek her out unless he abandoned that girl. She told him that if everything he has done is not in response to the chaos the Deluas have brought upon Croissant, then they can't ever work together. Pathetic people like his grandfather, who only live for one person absolutely disgust her. He acted as if it did not matter if he died, but he seems that he's still alive. She reminded him about Adelaide, his mother who died for him, yet he behaves as though he owes his life to some nameless country girl. Carloy cleared that the situation is very different. His mother never attempted to save him or die on his stead. She was unlucky and happened to die instead of him, but that child who put her own life on the line to help him escape. He can't see how that's the same, and he doesn't think he owes his life to his mother. Duenya agreed to him. When he was kidnapped, Adelaide indeed gave up on him and chose the child in her womb as the heir. Because Croissant would have been torn apart if the royal family had played into Delua's hands by starting a war, she lost her life because of bad luck, as what Carloy said, and nothing else. Who could have known that Duke Delua would suddenly poison her out of the blue? 
Duenya sarcastically told Carloy that he is a rational person but was so numb to his mother's death, yet put his neck on the line for a country girl he had known for two weeks. Questioning if that is normal, how could he exactly do what his grandfather did? How could he try to take the throne merely to find this country girl? Duenya was disappointed when she learned that Carloy did not care at all about bringing down the Deluas or further developing Croissant. Carloy revealed that the girl was dead, Duenya was shocked and assumed that the Duke must have killed her, and asked Carloy if he wanted to take revenge. Carloy answered that it is what Duenya wanted as well anyway. She asked what he will do after achieving his goal, will he end his own life? Carloy didn't answer, Duenya knew what he was thinking and became angry with him and told him that without the girl he had no reason to live. She slammed the table reminding him that Deluas are collateral relatives of Croydon's and Carloy do not have heir. Carloy explained that it was the reason he came to see her, because he can't allow Delua to take the throne, that's why he wanted to get rid of the duke first. Duenya finally knew that he came to discuss what he should do after he kills himself, to think Adelaide died for him. She reminded that he is not a common person, the purpose of his every thought, motive, and action should. Carloy continues her statement by saying that he should not base on one person only. He explained that Croyson needs her more than him. He showed a document stating that he planned to share his royal authority with the House of Peers. In that way, the fate of the country won't depend on the king alone and the Croyson will not fall to ruins because of one king's selfish decision. Duenya becomes speechless and asks to grant her the authority to dispose of the Deluas and allow her to get rid of the Deluas however she wishes. Carloy told him that she can do everything her way, but he will dispose of Duke Delua himself. Duenya told him to grant her the authority to dispose the Duke's daughter, so that she can put him in pain of losing someone he loves. Carloy asked if she really needs to be killed, and explained that if he can bring her over to their side, she might be a big help. Duenya claimed she didn't plan to kill her right away, but based on Carloy's response just now, it is even clearer she must have that authority since Delua's daughter seems to bewitch someone. Carloy explained that it is not like that, but Duenya insists that there's no reason for him to refuse. Carloy thought that Duenya is right and it's illogical for him to hesitate and should welcome her willingness to kill the queen. Duenya asked him what he will do. He thought that it's definitely the time for him to show her that tiresome rationality. No matter what anyone says, Yvonne is still a Delua and Lou died because of the Deluas, so he should hand her over. Carloy told her to do as she wishes, even if that means Yvonne will lose her life. Yvonne glanced at Ossel. She really wanted to stay in the tower with her mom the entire time, but the Duke told her to behave naturally because if she didn't come out of the tower, her guard from Maha would be suspicious. Ossel asked the reason for having many spells on the tower. And if there is really only a corpse there, why would they create all that fuss over one dead body? Yvonne glared at him, telling him that anyone would want to remain by their family's side, whether they be alive or dead. Asil revealed that he didn't understand since he doesn't have a family. She realized that Maha was among all countries that overworked their servants. She asked that he is already the king's family seeing how he put him in charge of guarding her and seems that Carloy relies on him a lot. Asil was flattered and asked if she was going around to look at the territory. She asked was what he was curious about and what did the emperor order him to do, and if he told her honestly, she would think about it and wouldn't tell the duke. Asil was hesitating while she told him to at least persuade her, but he didn't answer. Yvonne is about to go to her room when Asil stops her and tells her that the emperor is curious about the dark forest. She asked the reason of the emperor's curiosity about the dark forest since it was blocked off because of its dark magical energy and nothing will benefit them. Asil told her that if that's the case, then they can go inside and reveal that he wanted to go not because of the duke. Yvonne was thinking what it is that Carloy wanted to see there, then a flashback about Carloy telling her that he shouldn't have left him there. But there's no way he could have been searching for Lou for more than a decade. She can't even ask if he's searching for someone. She suddenly has a headache because of the spell. It seems that she needs to take him to the dark forest herself and see what he does to get an idea.
She told him she will think about it while Ossel thought that everything there was fishy even Yvonne's action. Count Lux Anson visited Kiana because neither the Emperor nor the Queen was present, so he had no choice but to call her. Kiana asked if his matter was urgent since he couldn't wait. Anson asked if she was aware that the war to conquer Maha has ended. Soon, the Croissant military will return and that person made it out alive again, so she doesn't need to worry. Kiana asked who he was talking about. Anson told her he was talking about Clyde Anson, his illegitimate brother. Kiana told him how he could call his brother a low life, his father would be sad in heaven. Anson told her just because his father allowed him to use their name doesn't change the fact that he is a filthy bastard born by a servant in Verney. He doesn't know how he makes it out alive, but he will make sure he won't next time. Once he finds evidence about her and his brother, her life as a concubine will. Kiana didn't finish his sentence and told him to write a diary instead. Kiana asked him to write a diary instead of babbling on when she didn't even ask about anything and if he's lonely, find someone to marry. He was insulted and walked away. She became serious after Count Anson left. Kiana was anxious of how slow the process is. At this rate, Clyde will keep getting drafted into wars and end up dying. They need to bring the queen to their side no matter what. She's thinking what to do since the emperor is still a mess after spending the night with the queen. Yvonne was watching her mother sleep while thinking what the maid said about her mother's health became weaker. Whether Carloy wins or the Duke wins, this needs to end before her mother's health gets even worse. Based on what she has experienced so far, she can't rely on the Duke's whims or random consideration for her mother's safety. What about Carloy? Will he protect her mother and her even after getting rid of the Duke? She has to find out what Carloy really wants. She called Ossel and would take him to the Dark Forest. She can't walk a tightrope between the two without knowing anything. She asked the Duke's loyal servant to prepare a carriage for her, but the servant hesitated and told her the Duke will be worried since the territory is dangerous. Yvonne insisted that she was with the Emperor's guard and will explain to her father herself once he returned. The man agreed and prepared the carriage. Ossel was thinking why the Duke's daughter was doing this, and what was that awkward atmosphere in the Duke's mansion. They arrived at the boundary of the Dark Forest. Yvonne offered her hand to Ossel while he hesitated thinking that the Emperor might bite his head if he learned about this. He approached his finger to Yvonne, then they two passed through the barrier and told him that a lot of corpses were burned there. She remembered what she heard that it was the day after the severe rainstorm. Duke de Lua's wife felt deeply disgraced upon learning that the Duke had an illegitimate child during their marriage and he had not gotten rid of the child after finding out about it. That was why she came into the dark forest along with her daughter, Yvonne, to see her mother and her the illegitimate child. But the Duchess could not have foreseen their unfortunate fate. Duke de Lua needed to take his anger and resentment out on something, eventually to her and her mother. So he took revenge by burning the whole forest together with the people living there. Yvonne asked Ashel what the Emperor was looking for, but he didn't answer. She crossed the barrier reminding him he couldn't leave the place without her. Ossel tried to cross through the barrier but he failed. Yvonne told him that she will relay the news to Carloy that he unfortunately didn't make it back alive. Ossel became worried and shouted that he was looking for a person. Yvonne turned around and asked how long he had been searching, but she didn't insist on asking. Ossel became happy and thought if that's enough information for her. Yvonne resumed, asking what else Carloy was searching for. Ossel pursed his lips and didn't answer. She claimed how sad it is for the Emperor to be left alone. Ossel revealed that he is also looking for a brooch. She was surprised and told him that's enough information while Ossel found it weird that she threatened him only for that. Yvonne took a dagger and wounded herself. Ossel asked what she was doing. She answered that she was strengthening the boundaries. Ossel told her that she's not even a magician. Yvonne told him that she will just say that he stabbed her. Ossel was shocked and asked if she was doing this because the Duke told her to. She knew that he is more than the Emperor's right hand and revealed that she is also more than just Alua's daughter. Yvonne was interrogated by the Duke. She explained that the Emperor's guard told her he would report to the Emperor that the tower is suspicious if she didn't take him to the Dark Forest. 
The Duke told her that she could just brush him off since the king can't do anything about it. Yvonne insisted that if anything goes wrong, she can't see her mother again, so she tried to trap the guard within the forest and kill him. The Duke asked why he came back alive. She explained that he underestimated him and failed because she caught on and stabbed her. He was suspicious and told her she was a fool. Yvonne apologized and told him that her mother's condition got worse the longer she stayed away from her and told him she will do anything he ordered her to do. The Duke said that it is the throne that he wanted and shocked, she doesn't know what she was supposed to do. He wanted her to win the Emperor and bore his child, but she insisted that it's easier to kill the Emperor. The Duke reminded her that it was his job to kill him and try harder and so she had to do hers. Hearing this, she realized that he had been trying to kill the Emperor but failed every time. She guess it's fortunate that he didn't order her to kill the Emperor though she doesn't know how much of an explanation he believed. Gordon noticed that the Emperor is acting strange, as if he had to give something up. Gordon broke the silence by explaining the positive side of having Duenya because many of the neutral nobles will side with her, especially the commanding officer. Markia, everyone knows that she nearly worships Duchess Duenya. Carloy didn't even show a slight happiness in his face and Gordon noticed it. Kiana was waiting for him when he arrived at the palace. She opened the topic about the queen while the emperor stoked and questioned her about the queen. Kiana asked if he made progress with the queen. The emperor told her that it would come along, but she asked him if it would be better to speed it up. Kiana asked if she could give him advice. He turned around to listen to what advice she would give. Kiana asked if he had given his heart to someone before and told him to treat the queen like that person. She told him that it's a lot easier, but he seems angry and wonders the reason for his reaction. The emperor responded that he will consider her advice. She wondered what happened to La Sordio that he changed drastically. Carloy was exhausted and wanted to quit everything now that he had let go of something he had been clinging pathetically and should feel much lighter and free. But she must have been his lifeline and the things left for him to do is to sink into oblivion. Someone was calling his name asking the reason not to keep his promise to her. Carloy shouted while seeing Lou away. Suddenly, he saw Yvonne and calmed him down, but eventually she was strangled to death. He was shocked and woke up from the dream. Carloy appeared in Yvonne's dream. The young Carl kept running until he grew up searching for Lou without taking a break. She wanted to stop him, but Carloy didn't listen to her. Now, suddenly, she was curious. She stopped thinking about him, but how often have he thought of her? Why is he still searching for her? At least she has her mom, but who did he have? What should she do to him? He's a fool searching for her and unable to forget her for 14 years. And when she finally gets down from the tightrope she's walking, what will happen to him? Yvonne came back to the palace while Carloy was remembering Kiana's advice to him, thinking that's easy to say. He saw Yvonne's face and remembered his dreams about her. She kept on calling him, but he was focused on her face. Yvonne noticed his face blushing. She called him while he announced that he was glad she returned safely and walked away. Yvonne thought that he might not have wanted to look at her for too long. The emperor asked what Ossel owned out. Ossel reported that he was able to get in the dark forest, but he didn't find anything. Carloy was thinking that the world is proving to him that Lou no longer exists. Ossel added that there's a tower at Duke's residence and his wife's corpse is in there and the queen eats and sleeps inside. Carloy realized that she really meant it when she said she wanted to visit her mother. Ossel also explained that the tower was cast with an advanced spell and asked if Croyson had a magician of that caliber. Carloy answered that they don't have, while Ossel mentioned what happened to him in the dark forest with the queen. Carloy finds it suspicious that Yvonne did all that without digging deeper while Ossel added that everyone at the Duke residence treats the queen very odd. It didn't look like anyone in the household adored her and she seemed quite awkward with the Duke as well. He also added that she said that she is more than the Duke's daughter. Carloy was contemplating what Ossel reported to him which some guesses do come to his mind. He commanded Gordon to find the replica of the brooch he's looking for because he wanted to confirm something. 
Many nobles were whispering about the emperor being negligent, since it has been so long since the House of Peers met. They were saying that the emperor has been getting along with the queen lately, and it seems that he is finally giving in to the duke. He announced that electing the Lord Speaker should be valid only when candidates come forth from all four founding families in the empire. One noble explained that Duchess Duinia can't vote because she has not attended for the last 10 years, while the emperor disagreed showing Duchess Duinia in front of the nobles. She apologized for not returning sooner because she had to recover from her illness. The nobles whispered as they didn't expect it and didn't know what will happen on the actual day of election. The duke asked why she's still alive, he thought she would follow her sister and told her he can personally send her to her sister's side and say hello for him. Duinya told him he will be going there before she does, but she doubts he won't get there and sees her sister because of his many sins. She told him that not only would it be her sister he wouldn't see but also his late wife. She mentioned that she will keep her promise she made 10 years ago. Duinya promised that she would come back for his head and asked him to keep his head. The Duke becomes furious cursing the Croydons for always destroying his plans. He can't lose to them again like last time and needs to make another way. Carloy explained that the Duke is possibly communicating secretly with Verney. Duinya doubted it while Carloy agreed but mentioned that he seems like he has been using Verney's magic. It also explained how the Duke was able to make a bizarre poison at some point. If he really did use Verney's magic, that is certainly a grave crime. Carloy believes that it could be magic from Maha or Verney. Either way, he can use that as evidence enough to make him disappear without a trace. Duinya understands that he will frame the Duke whether he's communicating secretly or not, but they don't have any evidence to start with or a person who can plant such evidence on him. Carloy asked if she knew much about the Duke, especially the Duke's daughter. But Duchess Duinya didn't know much about his daughter since he didn't let her leave the house. Carloy was speculating that they can't trust the rumor that he adores her, but Duinya explained that she already saw his child and made her convinced that he was a human after all. Carloy finds it odd that if the Duke really loves his daughter, could he really just leave her by his side like this? Carloy suddenly visits Yvonne and asked her if she enjoyed her time in their territory. She answered that she was and thanked him. He told her not to stab her hand or do anything else of the sort. Then he remembered her injuries last time. Carloy asked the reason for hurting herself and if she really wished to die while well, Yvonne disagreed, but she told him it would be better since he wished she were dead after all. He objected to it strongly and asked if she deliberately drank the poison for his sake and reminded her of the concubine's coronation. Yvonne told him why she will do such a thing, but Carloy is also curious about it and asked the reason she did that. Yvonne was afraid if Carloy finds something out or any evidence against her, she was considering telling the Duke. Carloy questioned her behaving differently from the Duke, not hating him, and was daring to call him by his name, and most of all, why is she kind to Carloy? He approached her repeating the same questions and looked closer, but she looks nothing like Lou. Carloy told her he can't figure it out and asked if she hates him, but Yvonne asked the same question. Carloy revealed that he didn't hate her anymore and told her she keeps reminding him of someone. Carloy told her that he doesn't have a reason to hate her and asked to stop thinking that he does, that way, she will have another option, and mentioned what Ossel told him that she seems to want an alternative. Yvonne told him not to jump to conclusions while Carloy took the knife and asked her to kill him since this will be what's best for her father. Yvonne was trembling saying he was absurd. She explained that she simply did not wish to get involved in the fight between her father and him. Yvonne noticed the brooch that he was looking for while Carloy explained that it was just a replica. She was surprised. Carloy whispered to her stating that she seemed to recognize it and perhaps seen it before at home. He reminded her that he is one of her options now and he can give her what she wants. Yvonne really eased the knife on her hand while trembling and stating how mean he is to her. Carloy was walking with Gordon when he asked the reason for Yvonne liking him. Gordon answered that she might like his appearance or maybe she is extremely lonely. He holds the brooch figuring out what he needed to know and doesn't care about the why anymore. Learning more about the queen will confuse him even more. 
The four nobles greet them while Yvonne notices Duchess Duenya. She feels that she is staring at her intently as she feels uncomfortable. Duenya asks Luxanson if he is very proud that his younger brother is one of the three people whom Maha wants to reward. Anson answered her that he didn't understand why such a fool deserves praise while Kiana glared at him. Duenya called him childish for saying such a statement since his brother received the last name Anson a long time ago.